<laughs> I tell you what, I, I sure enjoy these fellas. It's always good to see them. It's always good to share a stage with them and uh, get around with them. They're just uh, top shelf entertainment. Just plain old folks. That's the way we like it. We're just plain old folks down here in Whitley County. That's all we are. We're my brogan shoes and the whole deal. So, uh, but please make welcome to the stage one more time from up in northern Kentucky, the Moron Brothers, Hardo and Burley. Oh, thank y'all. Thank y'all for putting up with us again. We appreciate it. We, uh, no, I got to thinking about that toilet brush I heard. Deal he won a while ago. And I got a song that I wrote. We put it out on the internet. Remember when they had all the toilet paper shortage? Well, I couldn't believe it. You know, people took that really serious. They're just going to throw it away. And, and, uh, they must not have been raided in the country like me, but I was at Walmart one day, and everybody's like they's in a hurry and kind of mad. And people I know, you know, I'd speak, and they just kind of, what's going on? Well, I found out why there wasn't a, nothing over there in the paper goods, and I went home and I wrote this song. If I can get through it, we haven't recorded it. We put it on the internet, internet and we just call it the toilet paper song. box store the other day couldn't believe people was acting that way all in a hurry walking around like he's mad well i found out why paper goods them aisles was empty there i stood not even a paper napkin to be had then a skid load of charmin rolled in out of the back like feeding piranhas they began to attack pushing and shoving even though the punch or two People wasn't raised in the country like me. Toilet paper was a rich man's luxury. I wrote this song to tell them other things they can do. Use weeds and leaves and a handful of grass. All kinds of ways to clean yourself. When the new Sears catalog came out, we was all glad. In the summertime when the sweet corn was ripe, we'd save every cob was a really good wife. Toilet paper to us, something that the rich folks had. I made a list of things not to use, write them down, you won't be confused. Poison oak, poison ivy, sumac too. The one Burley hates is a horrible thing called stinging nettles. They really sting just about anything else out there you can use. Like weeds and leaves and a handful of grass, all kind of ways you can clean yourself. When the new Sears catalog came out, we was all glad. In the summertime when the sweet corn was ripe, save every cob was a really good wife. Toilet paper to us was something that the rich folks had. Now with all the fake news in the newspaper, I don't get one anymore. Now that I've got a good use for them, I think I'll get three or four. Stock Market Report, New York Times, National Enquirer will do this fine. Read about the royal family while you recline. Use the weeds and leaves and a handful of grass Oh, got kind the of way you clean yourself When the new Sears catalog came out We was all glad In the summertime when the sweet corn was ripe Save every cop was a really good wife Toilet paper to us Something that the rich folks had Well now 80% of the toilet paper's made in China anyway Burley said that's how they gonna wipe us all out someday now you know there's other things that you can do Hope it all works out in the end for you And be sure to wash your hands when you get through Be sure to wash your hands when you get through Alright, there you go now You think we ain't got a sick mind to write a song like that? You won't hear it nowhere, it's hardly book Kentucky But uh we, you know, I was talking to Tommy back there, drives for Larry Sparks, about the rain and stuff we've had. Boy, ain't we've had some, they had four inches of rain the other day in Winchester. Well, I live right down on the Kentucky River, and uh, back in March, man, it got bad up there. We had the awfulest pile of water come down on us, and a lot of y'all did too, I know you did. But uh, I'm standing out there in my yard, I'm watching that river come toward the house. I told the wife, I said, I believe it's gonna get in our house this time. It's coming up quick. My neighbor stand down there on his porch and here, here at river. Well, I'm standing there and I seen a hat go downstream. 
that hat stopped on the dime and started back upstream. Uh, wait just a minute here, something, something ain't right there. The hat was going back and forth and kind of working its way toward me. I hollered at my neighbor. I said, look at that out there, what is that? He said, it's Papa. He said he's gonna mow the yard come hell or high water. <laughs> No, we, we've had a lot of rain. Huh? We got the... Uh, let me ask y'all something. Uh, uh, tell them about the Amish guy up there. Oh, Alan Miller, oh. a buddy of ours. <clears throat> yeah, he's talking about that flood. And it's been a few years ago. We come back to Georgia. We come, come through Crab Orchard up there, you know, where the Amish people live. And we know all those folks, and we topped the hill. Man, everything was flooded, and... We topped the hill, and this old boy, we know he was standing in a mud hole, plumb up to here. All you see was his little beard and little hat, and we pulled over, and I run over the fence. I said, Daggone, Yoder, you in a heck of a mess, ain't you? He said, Boys, it's worse than it looks. I'm still on my horse. What about the Deep River Blues? All right, then. People ask us, for those of y'all that don't, have never seen us before, they ask us if we're actually brothers, really brothers. We've had somebody ask it back there, and I'm not gonna lie, I ain't lying this time. We're actually twins. That's a, I know, it ain't funny, it be his twin, but mama was telling me later that when she seen us, Daddy come in there, seen us laying there, little babies for the first time. He told her, he said, you might want to think about drowning that ugly one. That's how come he learned to swim before I did. But, uh... I told him learning to swim wasn't too tough. Getting out of that burlap bag was a trick. That way, Mama said, Mama said the first time Daddy picked him up, Held him in his arms and looked at him and shook his head and said, Woo, Lord have mercy. He's got my smile. Mama said, you need to turn him over. <laughs> <coughs> ah, boy. After she had the twins, she had four babies at one time with so many kids. And uh, Daddy said, I don't know what we're going to name these last four. Mama said, I'm going to name them myself. She called them Rudolph, Adolph, Get Off, and Stay Off. <laughs> But this song here, I, we wrote the middle part of it. It's old Doc Watson too. We love Doc Watson. Deep River Blues. Let me get that. You know what you got when you got a harmonica player up to the neck and concrete? None of concrete. All right. Let it rain, let it pour, let it rain. 
there ain't a whole lot more I got them deep river blues Let the rain drive right on Let the waves sweep along I got them deep river blues When I got them deep river blues Oh, I think we're uh, up there at home this morning before we left town. They robbed a the bank up there at home. And <clears throat> guy come running out of the bank, a bunch of people stand out there. And he ran up first, old boy said, Did you see me rob that bank? And old boy said, Yes, I did. Pow! Shot him dead right there on the sidebar. He ran up that second, old boy. He said, Did you see me rob that bank? <laughs> old boy said, Well, yeah, I did. Pow! Shot him dead. He run up that third old boy, he said, did you see me rob that bank? Old boy said, no, nah, my wife did. <laughs> we got a song we wrote here, you can tell the ones we write, they're a little bit different. And, uh, <laughs> I'm proud to say this next song we're getting ready to lay on you was voted by a bunch of bluegrass disc jockeys as the number one Worst bluegrass song in all of history. <laughs> I don't think they've heard the other stuff we write, but uh, but anyway, it's about our Uncle Ben, and we've got several stories about Uncle Ben. And one of my favorites is there's a little tavern there where we live at the bottom of the hill on the Kentucky River, and he lives up top of the hill, and he goes down there. He's 88 years old, but he, he's still bad to drink a little bit more than he should. And he rides his mule down that hill, no matter what kind of shape he's in, when he comes out of that tavern, if he can get on that mule, the mule will take him to the top of the hill. Back in the spring, all the boys got together and went out there and played a bad trick on him. He took his saddle off the mule and turned it around backwards and put it back on his mule. He come out of there about 9, 30, 10, and he was feeling no pain, but he made it up in that saddle. Mule started up the hill. He's hollering and screaming, got plumb up there in the yard. He said, Lord, have mercy, Judy, please come and look at your bed. She said, what's the matter, Ben? Somebody's cut my mule's head, plumb off. Uh, said, I had to hold my hand over his windpipe. He was losing a lot of air coming up through there. He's a, he's a character, Uncle Ben. He, he was down there about two, three weeks ago, and he was in there, and he, had too much and he went to the men's room and he got in there and got to screaming and hollering carrying on and the bartender said I better go check on him he walked in there and said Ben what's the matter he said every time I flush the toilet it pinches me he said no wonder you're sitting on the mop bucket <laughs> but we got this song here about him hope nobody's eating right now <laughs> Good luck. It was on one hot summer afternoon. Man, we thought we had it made. We had our fill of a big country meal. We was napping around in the shade. Our Uncle Ben was a big fat man. Soon he fell fast asleep. He snored and he wheezed and he coughed and he sneezed and swallowed his false teeth. Well, he jumped up and got blue in the face. So we knew there's something wrong. When he got bug-eyed, we all realized his false teeth was gone. Well, Uncle Ben cried to Aunt Judy, Lord, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna starve to death cause I'm afraid to eat, and if I could, well, I couldn't even chew. No, they're gonna have to cut me open, take me to old dark glass, and you ought to hear him holler when they charge him $20, you just have to let them pass. Doc said it was a sticky situation, didn't want to do an operation Said he could turn into constipation Complication, no doubt So he gave him a laxative to take Big old pills, pains, and aches Didn't know how long it take Till he chewed the way out Y'all hang on, you'll find out where he got the nickname Smiley Uncle Ben was ashamed to smile without his teeth A little embarrassed, no doubt Kept asking Aunt Judy what the doctor meant when they said they'll have to chew the way out. He didn't go to church of Aunt Judy very much, but now he felt like he needed to pray. So he got on his knee and asked the good Lord, please let there be another way. 
Next morning we thought we heard a wildcat scream, but it was just Uncle Ben. He broke and run to the outhouse, crying, Lord, I'm dying again. Aunt Judy went to check on him, and they'd gone for the longest while. When the door flew open, he said, fix me some breakfast, he's wearing a big old smile. Doc said it was a sticky situation, didn't want to do an operation. Said he put her into constipation, complication, no doubt. So he gave him a laxative to take, big old pills, pains, and aches. Didn't know how long it'd take, till he chewed the way out. Just a little bit of prayer from Uncle Ben, and things worked out in the end. Oh, thank you, music love. Oh, this hurt the number one worst bluegrass song ever. But yeah, thank you very much. We, uh, we, uh, Uncle Ben, he was bad to make moonshine years ago. I don't think he does that no more. But, uh, he coon hunter and he, he done a little bit of everything. Well, he pulled into town one night and a old pickup truck had a camper topper on the back of it. And he pulled up in front of the pool hall and got out and went in well there's a deputy across the street in the courthouse yard watching that pool all he said oh here come ben he brought some of that shine into town to sell at the pool hall and then he got to looking there was something dripping out of the back of that truck he went over held his hand under that drip smelled it got a good handful of it tasted it real big he said yep that's the moonshine all right Throw the back end of that truck open and there wasn't nothing in there but a red bone coon dog. <laughs> Name Moonshine. But, well, Uncle Ben, he, he had all kinds of problems. He he called one time, said he got his potty grip and his preparation H mixed up. Said he didn't have no problem with the gums itching, but he couldn't get his underwear <laughs> off. Man, we need to move on to something else. Yeah, I wish you would. How about something good to eat? Some homegrown tomatoes. All right, then. Boy, they about to leave homegrown tomatoes. I'm still getting a few, but I love them things. But we like songs about things to eat. See, you do it, eh? I think so. Okay. All right, then. I love better making the ladies and homegrown tomatoes up in the morning and down in the garden. Pick your apple, boy, don't get a heart. Plant them in the spring, eat them in the summer. All winter without them is a culinary bummer. I forget all about the sweating and the digging every time I go out. Pick me a big one, homegrown tomatoes, homegrown tomatoes. What I be without homegrown tomatoes? Ain't but two things money can't buy. That's true love, homegrown tomatoes. Or is I believe that is yours. <laughs> well, you can go out and eat that for sure, but there's nothing a homegrown tomato won't cure. Put them in a salad, put them in a stew. You can even make your very own tomato juice. Eat them with eggs and eat them with gravy. Eat them with pains, bent over and Put them on the side, put them in the middle. Put a homegrown tomato on the hot cake grill. Homegrown tomatoes, homegrown tomatoes. What'll I be with that homegrown tomato? Ain't but two things money can't buy. That's true love, homegrown tomatoes. I'd be Johnny at the Mater Sea. I know what this country needs. Just a homegrown Mater in every yard to see. When I die, don't bury me in a box in a cemetery. Out in the garden, be much better. And I could be pushing up homegrown Maters. Homegrown Maters, homegrown Maters. What I be without homegrown Maters? Hey, but two things money can't buy. That, yeah. No, that, that 
ain't Bigfoot. That's that's our sister, Lardonia. <laughs> as, as Aces was walking through the woods one night, Bigfoot jumped out and grabbed him. He said, oh, God, help me. God said, I didn't think you believed in me. Yeah, I know, but 20 seconds ago, I didn't believe in Bigfoot, neither. We, uh, uh, he wanted to go to town the other day, borrow some money. Well, we was going to get him some sound equipment. That stuff is high, you know. We could get it and maybe get another job or two. And so he stopped by the insurance office on the way into town. He wanted to go in there, and he asked that man, he said, buddy, I want to buy some fire insurance. And he looked at him and laughed. He said, no, we're all out of fire insurance. How about some flood insurance? Burley said, no, I don't know how to start no flood. I had to get him out of there, but we wound up at the bank, walked in there and told the little gal up front, ma'am, we're here to borrow some money. She said, well, the loan officer's here. He's upstairs. His name's on his desk. Mr. Cobb, go up there and see him, and he'll take care of you. We walked in there, and there he sat, name on his desk, had a big suit of clothes on. So, Mr. Cobb, we're here to borrow some money. He said, well, boys, that's good, said, but I need a financial statement. Well, I couldn't think of one to save my life. He said, a penny saves, a penny earned. I thought that was pretty good. What the man said to me next made me mad, and I couldn't remember the last time I got mad. He said, boys, I know y'all. Y'all need to go on back down at that river bottom. You ain't nothing but ignorant hillbillies. Get out of here. I said, you can't call people that no more. That's politically incorrect. He said, well, what are you then? I said, we're Appalachian Americans. He said, I know what y'all are. I said, you're troublemakers and you're hicks. Hit the road. You know what we do with hicks in the city? I said, no, sir, but I know what we do with cobs in the country. <laughs> we didn't get the money, but we left there with a pride. Tribute to Murphy. We got to do it. Everybody wants to hear that. <laughs> this last part of this song here, Burley didn't write it. It was a theme song to Kentucky Field. Y'all ever watch that Tim Farmer Country Kitchen show? Ain't that a good show? Yeah, that's a good show. We on there sometimes with Tim Farmer. But uh, he <laughs> he comes to the house sometimes and he gets on the nose of my boat and shoots some gar with that bow and arrow. I told him, I said, I don't want him to ever bite me. Heck, go on, I bet he's got a chomper on him. But uh, Burley wrote the first part of this. It's a tribute to Merle Travis, an old boy from Muhlenberg County. Took him, yeah, made uh, thumb picking famous all over the world, and Burley picks like him. And, and he wrote this song. It done good in Europe, believe it or not, put it on a prime cut with other artists. And it made the CMA charts over there. Well, they got talking about us going on a European tour. We ain't going to Europe. We can't speak European or nothing. And, but Bill Bryant and Barbara Bailey on Channel 27 out of Lexington wanted to talk about it on TV. So we went up there just to be on TV. And we're down in the basement. He finds a stupid popsicle somewhere and he done got the paper off of the popsicle. Bill Bryant comes and said, boys, this show is live. Other people didn't show up. She's killing time. You got to hurry, run, run. We show out running. He's in front of me, and I can't get around him. Right before he goes in front of them live cameras, there ain't no place to throw his popsicle, so he puts it in his pocket. Walks in there, Bill Bryant. Here they are, the moron brothers, Burley. Tell the folks what kind of tour you're going on. He just looks at him like a balking mule. And it's live. And I'm, I can't get around him and ask him again, what kind of tour are y'all going on? Well, I leaned up and whispered in his ear. I said, European. He said, I am not. My popsicle's melting. <laughs> that was the end of our TV. Hey, go on, honey. <laughs> Where's Bill Clinton when you need him? Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, get off that right now. You do look like Lardonia. We got a sister look just like you. Y'all remember that girlfriend I told you Lardo had in high school? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boo. All right, here we go. Ready? Yeah.
question for that Bigfoot. Is that a boy or a girl? You don't know? Well, these days and times, it really don't matter anyway. You can go to either back. Yeah. All right. If, if you're a girl, I'd appreciate if you don't come back up on stage no more. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. Oh, that's... that's, that's. Y'all don't know how to tell which one loves you the most, your wife or your dog. Lock them both in the trunk of the car for about an hour and see which one's happy to see you when you let them out. <laughs> I'll tell you, talking about he stayed in trouble with his wife. This happened years ago, back when him and his wife first got married. Why, they started to talk, wanted to talk about uh, starting a family, you know, having children. So, she, uh, Back then, you, you know, we didn't have cell phones and you had to go to the doctor to find out if he was pregnant. And he was at work one day and she had gone to the doctor. Well, she stopped at a pay phone back then and called him at work and he answered. She said, I hope you're happy. You've got me pregnant. He said, who is this speaking, please? <laughs> He's stupid. All right. We need to quit telling all these stories and do a serious song. Well, we don't know no serious song. Well, we do. We got one. Here's a pretty old song. If people like it, all right. we sing the words to it. And, uh, and it's called Grandfather's Clock. 
and the, you kick it off, just go on into it. No more jokes or nothing for the further time being. We've been, we've been talking too much. Just do it. They want to hear some good music right here. I worked up at home one day. I was going in the Walmart store. And I got up at the door getting ready to go in the door. Well, this yeah, we pulled in the parking there. lot and some guy was pushing about 20 carts across there. He hollered out the window at him and said, Hey, buddy, don't you think somebody else might want to use one of them? He's stupid. Just do the song there. Just go on with it. One day last week up at home, I was going in the Walmart store, and when I got up at the door, getting ready to go in the door. We got in the store, there was a woman there had been to the doctor, and she had a patch on her eye, you know, she'd just been to the doctor. And it's a super Walmart. And I told Burley, I said, oh, look at that lady with one eye. He said, all right, where? I'm telling you, stupid. What's the hold up? Come on, just go up, go with it. But anyway, one time, I remember one time, up at home, they had the blood mobile up there by the front door. They was taking blood, you know. It's good to do that if you can help your fellow man out. And they got them Walmarts everywhere. He was scared of needles. And so I went in there and was going to give some blood. Been a while since I done that. Old boy laying there, they're drawing blood out of his arm, and I know everybody, but I didn't know this guy. I said, pal, you ain't from around here, are you? He said, nope. Cherokee, North Carolina. I said, well... Are you Indian? He said, yeah. I said, full-blooded? He said, not right now. I'm about a half pint low. <laughs> if you don't do the song, we're going to move on to something else. Come on. I remember, I remember one time, a long time ago, up at home, I was going in the Walmart store. I got up there at the door getting ready to go uh, in. This you, remember the, walking and all. you remember the gal we seen in there? No, I know. Yes, you do, too. Walk, it's a super Walmart Yeah, store. we seen a gal in there we hadn't seen since high school, boy. It's in Nicholasville, Kentucky. I used to know her pretty good. And she had her back to me. He used to know her, too, but I know her. She was a good gal. And she had her back to me. I hadn't seen her for years. I said, I'm going to surprise her. I eased up behind her and I put my hand on her shoulder. She jumped up and turned around and screamed. It wasn't who I thought it was. It scared me. It scared her. I said, I'm sorry you look like Helen Brown. She said, you ought to see me in my blue dress. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to do something else. Uh, one time, a long time ago, burned home, I was going in the Kmart store. I got up there at the door getting ready to go in and this fella come walking out carrying a grandfather's clock and he come out and this old drunk come around the corner run into him knocked him down broke his grandfather's clock I got mad he jumped up with the old drunk said won't you care what did he say the drunk the drunk said drunk said the old boy with the clock said the drunk won't you watch where you going and the drunk said well, won't you carry pocket watch like I do well, I'm glad you got that out. My grandfather's clock was too tall for the shelf, so it stood many years on the floor. It was taller by far than the old man himself, though it weighed not a penny weight more. It was born on the morn of the day that he was born, and always treasure and bright. But it stopped once, never to run again on the day that the old man died. Ninety years without slumbering. Life seconds a number men. Stop one, never to run again on the day that the old man died. Boy. And in childhood and manhood the clock seemed to 
know and share in his grief and his joy. It struck on his poor when he walked through the door with a blooming and beautiful bride. And it stopped once, never to run again on the day that the old man died. Ninety years without slumbering, life seconds numbering. You were good to talk. We we got met a green here a few years ago and we stopped at McDonald's, you know, and I got out of the van, had my little bag, and Tommy run up to me and said, Bertie, what you got in that bag? I said, cheeseburgers. He said, how many cheeseburgers you got in that bag? I said, I'll tell you what, Tommy, you guess how many cheeseburgers I got in this bag, and I'll give you both of them. And Tommy said, four? Oh, he's a good old boy. We've known Tommy for years and years. But we're going to tell you a story, too, and do one more good song for you, because I know y'all are chomping at the bit to get Mr. Sparks up <laughs> yeah. here and get us off the stage. But, we well, you know what you're waiting for. <laughs> but uh, somebody asked me about the tour bus. Ain't y'all ever been to Renfro Valley and seen a tour bus sitting out in front of the Hall of Fame building? Yeah. Well, it's falling to parts sitting out there, and. The fuel pump quit working on it, and I, it was so rusted so bad underneath of it, I afraid he's gonna fall through the floorboard. And there was a reason why his side was rusted a lot worse than mine. He drinks a lot of coffee. But anyway, we uh, tried to get down to Georgia in that thing one time. Years ago, back when it was running good. And I'll tell y'all, I might know it, y'all close down here in Tennessee. Them Tennessee troopers, they ain't got no sense of humor. <coughs> We took the back roads because we knew we'd be driving slow and boy, people was passing us by and rude to us. They was waving at us with part of their hand or something and they're trying to tell us we're number one, I think maybe. I don't know what it was, but anyway, our state, this state trooper got in behind us and he pulled us over and before he got up there to the car, me and him had to hustle and get our seat belts fastened real quick before he got up there. And he walked up there and said, sir, do you know why I pulled you over? I said, yeah, I do. We was the only one you can catch coming down through here. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he liked that. He said, well, I see you got your seat belt fastened. I said, yes, sir, we always fasten our seat belt. He said, do you always run it through the steering wheel like that? <laughs> <clears throat> what got us in trouble? It was hot that night. Them little old flies and gnats was biting him deer flies or something, I don't know. Yeah. He kept smacking them bugs and he said, 
Man, I've got to get y'all a ticket and get back in the cruiser so these flies are eating me up. What the kind of fly it is, these things? Burley says they're circle flies. He said, what kind of fly is a circle fly? He said, the kind that circles around the horse's hind end. That police officer said, sir, are you saying that I'm a horse's hind end? Burley said, no, I would never do that, but now you can't fool them flies. <laughs> that one got us in trouble. We enjoy y'all having us down here. We've enjoyed being with y'all and watching you out there today. If y'all had half as much fun as we had, we've had twice as much fun as you. But be sure to check us out on the Moron Cast on the internet, rumble.com, Facebook, YouTube. We got 37 shows we've done all of them are different and we've got a christmas show coming up home there jessamine county high school gonna be a big show in the 17th of december at seven o'clock get your tickets probably wouldn't hurt to get them early but if it's indoor and everything's gonna be nice a big christmas show up there you can check us out on uh any product you need the moronbrotherstore.com that's all the sales pitch I'm going to put on you. This last song we're going to do for you, I was on the Lexington, Kentucky Fire Department for 26 years, and something happened the last year I was on duty out on Old Richmond Road. I was at a little country station, 18. There was a bad wreck, and uh, we responded that morning. We worked from 7 in the morning till 7 the next morning, 24-hour shifts, and the run come in right before we was getting off at 6 before daylight and it was raining. And I'm gonna send this out to them boys up there on the hill, the first responders, anybody out there that works for police or sheriff or fire, I'm gonna tell y'all something about them people. You really don't appreciate them and support them or need them until you need them. And when you need them, they'll be there. So support them every chance you get. Thank y'all again. This song is a true story. It's called Old Firefighter. Fire bell rings, little country firehouse number 18. Three men jump on the truck and head out for a bad wreck down the road. The old fireman that was driving said, boys, I'm sleeping good. Another hour we've been off duty. We'd all been headed home. In one car, there was a drunk driver in get on to a young couple. The drunk driver didn't make it. Hope his soul was saved from hell In the other car was a woman crying Next to her was her husband dying She was carrying their firstborn child Trapped behind the wheel He thought it was tough that old firefighter After all them years He found himself on his knees in the street In the rain with some stranger having prayer Can't explain what made him do it Never before had he acted so odd. He was at the right place at the right time. He knew he'd been used by God. The young woman seemed to calm down as the old fireman started to pray. Though he'd never done anything like it before, the words came to him to say. He said, in Jesus' name, dear God, please help this woman and her family. The next thing he said didn't come from him, but he said it anyway. Fear not, the Lord is with you. Your husband and baby's fine. The other firemen looked at him in disbelief. They thought he'd lost his mind. Cause the odds was greatly against him as the ambulance took him away. But the greatest healer of all was there. A miracle happened that day. He thought it was tough that old firefighter After all these years He found himself on his knees in the street In the rain with some stranger having prayer He can't explain what made him do it Never before had he acted so odd He was at the right place at the right time Do it be new by God Four months later, Christmas Eve morning Little country firehouse number 18 
The old fireman was taking a nap. He heard visitors call his name. They said a Christmas card just didn't seem right. We wanted you to see. There stood the woman next to her husband with a heavy little boy baby. Thought it was tough that old fox fighter. Once again after all these years, they found herself thanking the good Lord above as they all stood there in tears. God is still there and he hears our prayers. Miracles still happen today. The reason I know this story is true. That old fireman was me. God is still there and he hears our prayers. Miracles still happen today. God bless y'all. Thank, Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Keep laughing no matter what. Lardo and Burley, the Moron Brothers.